<sighs> Come on, let's go. Wait, holy shit, is that Arza? Arza! Arza! What? Wait, oh, Mike? Yeah, hey, how you doing, man? I'm good, how are you? Dude, where are you going? Uh, I'm just heading home. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I just got a bite to eat. About to go to work. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, you excited for uh, tomorrow? Yeah, we good, we good to go still? Yeah. Okay, um, who are, who are, uh, who are we talking with? Talking with, uh, Rock Guy Tony. You said Sock Guy Tony? Like he does sock puppet shows? No, Rock Guy Tony. Clock Guy Tony? He no. tells the time? Rock Guy Tony. Flock Guy Tony? He's a shepherd? He's a bird? No, Rock Guy Tony. Frock Guy Tony? Dude, Rock Guy Tony. Oh, stocks. Investing. <sighs> GameStop. Hello and welcome to the Mike at the Helm podcast. I'm your host, Mike Spencer. And I'm your host, Arza Helm. We have a fantastic guest today. One of my favorite Twitch streamers at Rock Guy Tony. He is from the state that Popeye started in, Louisiana. He's a theater kid. He is majoring in geology. And uh, he's a big uh, climate change activist. Tony, is there anything else I should mention about you? Uh, you did a great job. Nice job. All right, Fantastic. I try. Well, uh, welcome on to the podcast today. I personally have not met you yet, and I'm curious how did how did you two meet? Uh, so, oh, oh, you go ahead. Yeah. So uh, basically, I posted a TikTok mm. of like technically you can define water as lava. Uh, because of uh, because ice is a rock and uh, a, a liquid a rock is an aggregate of one or more minerals and ice is technically a mineral which makes it a rock and lava is like molten rock and so technically if ice is a rock there's some instances in which water can be categorized as lava um, and I made a TikTok about that and it blew up and Damn. so I was like oh I'll start streaming on TikTok and I started streaming on TikTok. And then, like, there were some people that watched me regularly, and I was like, "Oh, this is kind of fun." So I started a Twitch, and sort of that's that's how the sort of how the progression uh, happened. And uh, Mike was one of the first uh, first people that was like in the in the chat. So no that's way, how we sort of, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I like joining people's lives that are a little smaller. Like I'm like, "Oh yeah, this guy has six viewers. I'll totally do that because they'll you know respond to you and talk to you, and you get to have a genuine sure. conversation." So that's why I like the smaller Twitches too. Ours actually streams on Twitch as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I do some games. What? So do you do you stream like Minesweeper? Yeah, oh, really? Minesweeper Minesweeper has been the primary. The primary. <laughs> game That's that so I've cool, played. actually. Yeah. And so, let's see. Your TikTok you talked about like geology stuff, and that that's mm -hmm. what you studied, yeah. Yeah. So I studied geosciences and theater. Those are the two okay. like things I'm majoring in. Okay. Um, double major. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a very odd double major. I don't think anybody yeah, in the school has was, done that before. I was just thinking <laughs> that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the I did the I did the rock stuff on TikTok. I also did some like more like political ish type things, okay. and I also talk about po political stuff on Twitch as well when the when the time arises. And that's okay. mostly due to the fact that there's a lot of very dumb people uh, on the internet, and some <laughs> of them somehow end up in my chat and start saying absolutely insane shit. Oh, can I swear? I'm assuming. Yeah, no, you can totally No swear. swearing uh, ever. No, I'm kidding. Swearing all the time. <laughs> uh, it's can you like, name some uh, examples of the crazy so stuff you've heard? The, 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 best, the best one is, so uh, there's a kid named Joel, who um, he would always say like, he was like a huge like trumpet, like big, big Trump guy, mm. um, right? And he is like still convinced that Trump is the legitimate president. He said that like Trump was going to get inaugurated on March 4th, which uh, has oh happened and didn't happen. Um, and like it was because like the original inauguration date was March 4th and like in like the in 1871 the United States when written in all capitals was technically a corporation and not a country and so like there basically the argument is like there has never been a legitimate precedent since like Ulysses S. Grant, I think, who was the 18th president. I think it's a fact check there. That's going to be needed. Um, <laughs> uh, and that, like, Trump is was going to get inaugurated as the 19th president on March 4th. Um, so that's probably the that's probably the craziest thing I've uh, heard. Right. I think he said uh, anyone that's trans is a all pedophile as well. He did. He did say that. 
you just know, all that fun kind yeah. of stuff. I'm trying to think of more stuff. I can't think of anything else. Though. Well, I'll, it's just the same same old shit of like, oh, like the Bible says being gay is wrong when like being gay isn't actually mentioned in the Bible before the the pre translation. Right. Like they they missed. It was like a they and I'll, again like a fucking I I don't know. I'm not an expert on this, but um they I'm pretty sure they mistranslated the Bible mm. so that the word like the word that was that's like now used as homosexual or whatever was originally the word for pedophile. Um, and it's sort of there was it was like an it was the two antagonized gay people pretty much is my yeah. understanding. I've read um, articles about that. Never fact check them or anything. Though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I I know it's true to some extent, but I just don't know like what the exact specifics are. It was like there was like a specific translation company that translated it in a way that translated uh, like the word for uh, pedof- pedophile to be like homosexual. Um, and so since mm-hmm. then, like which it's which has fueled like a generation if not generations of people who are just super super homophobic because of words in a book that was translated from people that wrote words that said they got heard them from god right that was like the 1800s when that got like fully translated that sounds right i don't know i have no idea to english yeah no that's english but like when uh, those words changed and stuff oh where they, they like word. modernized yeah. it yeah like our oh. current translation yeah current i'm not sure talk more directly into my mic. more directly into my okay <laughs> sounds good uh, um, so, Tony, um, can you explain more about how water is lava? I'm still, like, trying to get on board with you. Oh, wait. Okay. Is water wet? We'll go with that oh, first. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess there's sort of two schools of thought that I think are, that I think are valid. Mm-hmm. There's one school of thought that will argue that, like, if there's water on something else, that makes it wet. So water itself can't be wet because you can't really put water on water. However, I think I might disagree with the fact that you can't put water on water because I think if you I think if you take a single water molecule, like a single water molecule, like a H2O, two hydrogens and an oxygen, mm. um, that on its own is not wet. But the second you add another water molecule to that, that water molecule is now on another water molecule. So I would argue in that circumstance, the water is wet. So I actually think water is wet. I think water is wet too. That's my argument. As well as like, you can't call water dry. Like that's always yeah. Like, for, you can't say, <laughs> look at that dry water over there. Yeah. Okay. Then you, dry you say like, you can have like soft water or hard water. All right. I guess like ice could be dry water, and it's a yeah. rock too. True. Okay. So uh, so lava is lava is water. Where water is lava. Well, yeah. Only if it's naturally occurring. So like and like that that mm. sort of goes for ice being a rock as well. So uh, okay, I'm gonna test my fucking geo 101 knowledge. So um, a mineral is something that is naturally occurring, inorganic, um, solid. Uh, fuck. Shit. Uh, <laughs> naturally occurring, solid, inorganic. Um, I believe rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It is it is rocky. Oh man, my my geo professor is going to be disappointed in me. It's okay. Is there a way to look it up? Yeah, I will I will find it this I will find it when I stop thinking about it. You can look it up though if you if you can get to it before me. So so when you stream, do you like play Minesweeper and then that's just the background to you talking about like geology and politics or Yeah, so I the the main reason I wanted to start streaming on Twitch is because there's a like I there's a lot of dumb people in in chat. Uh, yeah. Frequently, and there's also a lot of dumb people who are streaming about thing like they, they a lot, there's a lot of people that talk authoritatively about something that they don't necessarily know a lot about. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I think I can remedy to an extent is like any sort of misinformation surrounding climate change. Maybe not any misinformation, um, but I am definitely more educated on climate change than the average person, and I feel like I can I can at least remedy some of like a uh, lack of knowledge for some people because I think a lot of people don't understand how it works because the climate system is very complicated, and mm. a lot of people will use the complexity of the climate system as a scapegoat uh, to be like, oh, we don't understand every part of it, so like, how do we know that? like climate change is caused by humans or at least is influenced by humans right there's a big thing where people say like oh it's natural like based on the cycle it's supposed to be more like this i don't know anything about climate change. if you want to trigger the fuck out of me all you have to say is the climate is always trained is is always changing uh because that it's it makes me so mad because like yes the climate is always changing but like the degree to which it is changing is something that is unprecedented in all of geologic history so what, what are some of the main contributors to climate change 
So uh, the the main one that's like often cited is like is uh, sort of carbon dioxide yeah. um, in the atmosphere, um, and it basically it's like do you guys uh, like the greenhouse effect where basically like light is uh, and I this is testing me a little bit like heat is bounced off of the off of the earth and it would be going out like you don't not all of the heat from the sun stays in the atmosphere some of it gets like reflected back out right. so the greenhouse yeah. effect basically it puts these gases that can ba- bounce some of that heat back in. Um, and so less heat is escaping into the atmosphere or at, like through the atmosphere basically um, and we're putting a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere f- through like manufacturing um, and like also through like the, the usage of petroleum so like when you're like traveling in your car and things like that um, and we're currently at about like 420 parts per million when it comes to CO2 and the recommended maximum in order to like create a safe living space for uh, humanity is 350 parts per million. So we're right now at 420 and we're supposed to be 350 maximum. Um, uh, how do they get to that number? How do they find the maximum? That would be, I think it's like, um, it was like, that's like the number to increase the climate by a certain, I think it's like one or two degrees um, because any further than that, like the, the more you, the more you change the climate rapidly, the worse uh, outcomes there are going to be. Um, so like 350 would still be higher than it, it like should um, without like with the absence of humanity um, but it's not so far outside of the realm of what is natural that it will sort of like cause like ca- catastrophe mm, right so is the climate as it is right now like hurting animals and people yeah so since so we th- kill no, not like we but like over a hundred species per million die like go extinct every year um uh and uh that is about 10 times what the recommended like extinction rate per million was so that's another sort of like there's there's a few categories that um scientists have sort of put together as like this is like the re- the recommended maximum this is like our ecological ceiling uh, there's a few categories that um that that scientists sort of work together to recommend um and by bi- like loss of biodiversity is one of them so carbon dioxide slash climate change is one of them uh fucking up the nitrogen cycle is one fucking up the phosphorus cycle is another one um uh ocean acidification is another um there's so there's a bunch of metrics that are like that are part of global change that aren't necessarily climate change but because because most people don't understand like the the nuance between like saying like climate change versus like changing the nitrogen cycle um it's sort of all sort of like human fuckery is labeled as climate change um so that i feel mm. like that's sort of like the the layman's uh the, when when somebody says climate change it's not sc- exclusively limited to the heating of the of the atmosphere like it would be in like a scientific circle i mm. like that phrase human fuckery because i feel like yeah. a lot of problems are because of human fuckery true yeah no it's it's we like the there's this one interesting paper I read I think it's in like Time magazine um, that was it's about this thing called a donut economy um, and basically uh, it's instead of having like a an economy that basically maximizes GDP growth which is what we currently have like a like a fairly unregulated version of capitalism uh, the donut academy space uh, academy huh, <laughs> economy uh, basically sets like a, a social floor where like everybody has like healthcare, food, et cetera, et cetera, and an ecological ceiling where those 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 metrics that I listed earlier um, are not supposed to go beyond a certain point. And basically, the safe operating space for humanity is the area between that social floor and the ecological ceiling. And what that will result in would be like um, a GDP that would go like up and down and kind of like sort of stay a little bit constant, maybe have a slower rate of growth than like unfettered capitalism. Um, and they're trying that in part of Amsterdam. And Amsterdam tends no to do way. a lot of. Yeah, no, I know, right? It's, it's, it's super interesting. I'm curious to see if it works or not, right? Um, so Mike and I were in debate in high school. For and sure. there was a time when. For the event that I debated in, we were preparing for a debate over whether or not there should be a carbon tax. Mm. And there was some evidence. I, I'm not sure where it came from, but I'm pretty sure it, like, it was credible enough to be used in a competitive scene of debate. <clears throat> um, but basically, it was saying that more uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has the opposite effect 
than the greenhouse effect because it reflects the rays before they get into the Earth's atmosphere, like the Earth's heat. And I just kind of dismissed that, but when you were talking about the greenhouse effect, I'm like, you know, like, what is the counter argument to that? And like, why is that not true? So I, I don't know the exact like nuance behind that. My guess is that it like it, that effect might happen, but it probably happens to a lesser extent because what mm-hmm. we do have, what we do have is like the data. Like, so we have, we have data for like global temperature per year over time since like, since like forever, uh, not forever, but like for a large amount of geologic history, we can yeah. look at past climate because basically, uh, for in simple terms, like climate is like the information about climate is stored in sediments. So like you can drill into a lake and you can pull out like a core of sediment and you can tell like what the climate was in that area. Okay. Um, so we know that what that's been historically, and we also know the carbon dioxide levels historically from the same process. Um, and so what we what we see is we see a um, a increase in global temperature that is like insane like it just spikes up faster than any time in geologic history and at the same time there is that spike in carbon dioxide as well okay. so like even if even if like that what you're saying is true of like having carbon dioxide on the outside bounces okay. off some heat um, it's not sufficient to uh, counteract the problem because it's not it's just not the, in the reflected in the data that we've that we're seeing okay but it's, it did snow here yeah <laughs> a couple months ago so Where is this global warming that <laughs> yeah, I like, us, that's man. also a, that's a good meme <laughs> um, so is that is that the same way they figured out like the climate and stuff in the Paleolithic era like with dinosaurs? Yeah, so it, it would be the same. It would be the same process. It's just like a. It's like a. It's like a technique that's usually done through like coring of sediments. Okay. Have, have and, you oh, ever? Fun, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Fun fact: the um, you know, like the Perseverance Percy that just got landed on Mars. Yeah. So that that rover is equipped with sediment coring technology, and so we're going to be able to look at Mars climate history at some point. Oh. Um, wow. <clears throat> the way that it's going to work is. They're going to co- take the cores out. Percy's going to take the cores out. It's going to leave them. And then later down the road, another Mars mission is going to come and pick them up. And we're going to be able to analyze like Mars's climate history, which I'm wow. super pumped about. That's really cool. That's going right? to be scary, though. Because, yeah, there's ice on Mars, right, and water. And so there yeah. could have totally been life at some point. We don't know if there's liquid water on Mars. It it's uh, that's sort of a debated thing in the in the in the field. Mm. Um, it sort of seems like there isn't liquid and it's just solid, but it's it's hard to tell. Um, that's still sort of up for debate. Um, and yeah, the the one of the main questions that Percy uh, set out to answer is whether or not there's uh, has been life on Mars, or whether or not there is. There probably isn't, but there. I would I think there probably has been. I think there's gonna I think they're gonna find some sort of bacteria or something. Have you seen those new um, iceberg machines that are supposed to help combat like the ocean levels rising? No, I haven't. No, I guess they have these big submarines and they sent them out to like Antarctica and those places and they send them like deep underwater and they start to freeze the water into ice and then the ice like floats up and it's like in a hexagon shape. And uh, it just makes me think, like, why couldn't we just, like, you know, be better with the climate instead of just building these giant boats to start (laughs) making ice for us? That's kind of sick, though. Um, that is pretty sick. I don't think it. I don't. I, I kind of agree with you. I don't really think it's sustainable because, like, in the end, you're not solving the problem of the fact that it is warmer and that ice is going to melt faster, even if you're producing it. Right. Um, like, it, it seems like a short-term solution. Yeah. But I mean, hell, look, if we can find out a way to fix it without like curbing our emissions, fuck it. I, as long as, as long as, like, the problems get solved, I'm just, I'm just hesitant to believe that we'll be able to control our climate system before we can. Like before, it's too late. While not like curbing our emissions. Mm. So are you are you for things like environmental taxes, like carbon taxes, or? Yeah, I I, I I frankly don't even understand why we don't already have a carbon tax because like the Clean Air Act is supposed to like mitigate the release of like greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and I I, I frankly have no idea how like carbon dioxide does not apply there. Mm. So I think um, probably. Yes, I think it's going to be a complicated thing to implement, and you're going to need to implement other things around it. Uh, but I would probably be for it overall. Uh, are you familiar with the the citizens' climate lobby? Yes, but not like extremely. Are you, Mike? No. Um, so essentially, they they're pretty big. They have chapters all around uh, the U.S. and they have one here in Salt Lake, and it's a nonprofit 
centered around like lobbying for uh, for legislation to mm-hmm. slow climate change. And I know one of their big things is um, a carbon tax, but the the money gained from the carbon tax will be given to citizens to equip their homes with renewable energy. So whether that's like solar panels or I don't know what else to use um, other than solar, solar panels on an individual household level, but... Um, I'm a part of it. I don't do much with it. I want I'll, all the time. I'm like, oh, I want to do more with that. And then mm. I've like written one little like op-ed piece, but it didn't get published. Oh, but uh, yeah. but I really yeah, everything I've seen from them, I really like. And I was just curious to your thoughts on it. But you'll have to check them out more. Yeah, Citizens Climate Lobby. You said. I, I'm pretty sure that's the name. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check it out for sure. I mean, that sounds pretty based. You know, it sounds like a sounds like a pretty good uh, plan. One of the one of the problems with solar power is we don't have a good way of storing it. Like our yeah. ba- the, the batteries that we have aren't very good. They're working on like there's a lot of research that's going into like improving battery technology, and I think if we can improve the battery, our solar power is going to like be much much better. And isn't there? Uh, I read some some like scientific principle or something where like the most uh, energy from the sun that can be stored is like thirty three percent, and it yeah. has to do with like the way the photons work or something i don't know i don't know enough about physics or science or whatever that is but yeah i'm not sure what like the maximum efficiency of solar panels is like the theoretical maximum efficiency is but i know that our current ones are like 10 to 15 percent efficient when it comes to like how much energy is hitting them versus how much they're able to take in but even of that 10 to 15 percent like most of it it doesn't end up being used because we don't have a good way to store it i there's a big uh so utah's pretty conservative um i don't know if you've ever been out here but there's this thing that I've heard a lot where uh, conservatives say, well, creating solar panels is like takes more energy and is more harmful to the environment than the use of them. Uh, have you ever heard that? And yeah, you know I've heard it. It's just, it's just not true. It's, it might be true in the scale of like a couple years, but like mm. the, the thing is like it's longevity. And I think one of the issues that we have with our current like, uh, like economy is we're not good at looking at longevity. Yeah. Because in the long run, investing in renewable energy is going to be very, very profitable. But it's just like in the short term, it's much easier to just like like destroy uh, some shale to try to get some natural gas out by fracking, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're supposed to be running out of oil in the next uh, 50 years or something, right? Uh, I don't think... I, I think we there's a lot more oil out there that is usable. I think like... I, 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 I'm going to need to run a calculation on that because there, we still have like trillions of barrels of oil that is like waiting to be fracked. Um, mm. Obviously not ideal. Um, uh, but uh, there's, still, there's still a decent amount of oil out there. But honestly, the bigger problem is, the, is like the emissions behind it. Um, and also like I guess we're pretty much we're, we're probably going to run out of like easily uh, retrievable oil. Um, because like so, so the way that like oil... The way that like petroleum and natural gas work is like there's something called an anticline, which is basically like rocks get folded and there's like a like a like an A shape almost without the little line in the middle, and then a lot of the petroleum gets stored at the top of that A shape, um, and mm. then natural gas is like slightly under that, and so um, and that happens over the course of millions and millions of years, um, and basically the petroleum flows from like what's called a source rock uh, into like a reservoir reservoir rock, which is um, like so, it, 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 most petroleum like is made in shales, and then it moves out, um, and then basically you can drill down and you can get that petroleum, and that's like the easy to get petroleum. We there's not really a ton of that left in the U.S. So right now, what we're what, what we're looking at is the Marcellus Shale in Pennsylvania, which is the whole like fracking um, debate, uh, because there's a lot of oil in there, but in order to get that oil is still in that shale, it hasn't gone into the reservoir yet. So in order to get the shale out, you basically need to like blast it with this water or chemical solution to try to break up the rock and retrieve the oil and natural gas from there. Um, mm. And a fun, interesting thing about that is, so f- there's fracking fluid is what you need to use to get that to get that oil and gas out. Um, and we don't actually know what's in fracking fluid because it's like a company secret. So there's people that are just pumping oh, this wow. mystery liquid into the ground and we don't know what's in it. It's mostly water, but like we don't know what the like other chemicals are in it because it's like a company trademark or something. 
Uh, Does like the government not know? Like, do they not have to submit that for like? I think I review? think there's something. I don't know that I don't know the exact details behind it, but I know it's not public knowledge. Maybe it's like mm. the KFC Eleven Herbs and Spices. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's their secret water gasoline recipe. <laughs> So do you know what gasoline is exactly? Like, I hear it's like dinosaurs and whatnot, but is it just like any life form that died years ago? Or? No, it's only plant matter. So plant uh, matter? Like, yeah, it's, it's, most of it is from like phytoplankton, plankton, um, which is like unicellular plant matter that oh, ends up... Get, it, so in order for it to form, you need to be in an area without a ton of oxygen. It needs to be in an anoxic area. Mm. Um, and so like basically like that, that like plankton dies or whatever, the, that plant matter dies. Um, and it uh, so petroleum specifically is that phytoplankton. It's usually like more smaller organisms. Coal, I think, is more plants. Um, uh, so like larger organisms. Um, but all all fossil fuels, when you think of them, think plants. I totally didn't know that because I remember hearing those stories. Like, isn't it ironic that there's yeah. this little plastic dinosaur and he's made out of dinosaurs? Yeah, it's. But I think it's. I, I had that misconception as well. That's but funny. There's still some irony there, though, With because plastic plants. Yesterday, yeah, plastic plants. Oh, true. <laughs> no, um, yesterday we recorded our previous podcast and we talked about phytoplankton. Oh, and nice. It's estimated between fifty percent and eighty percent of the world's oxygen is produced by phytoplankton. So, yeah, they they combat climate change, but then they also cause it when yeah. they die. And turn into oil. So you yeah, don't know. It's like Batman. Is, you don't true. know if he's the villain or the hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, it takes him like five million years to become petroleum. So That's um, true. You either die a hero or you or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. It's true. And that goes or you die <laughs> and then <laughs> become a plant. villain five million years ago. I guess, yeah, they're not really alive. But they're like, <laughs> they're around, you know, they're not, they didn't get eaten that day. Yeah. So how much do you know about like animal agriculture and how much that like affects the environment? You can test me. I'm I'm pretty open when I don't know something. So uh, and yeah, also like like I'm not a full ass expert. So if anybody is listening and they're like, oh, I'm gonna take everything that, with, that this person says without looking it up, just double check. I'm right. pretty you, certain of all the things that I say, but in case I'm wrong, just double check. Right, you're just a half ass expert, right? Yeah, I'm like ass. a. I would I would I would send myself at like the like I'm an eighty percent ass. You know what I mean? Eighty <laughs> percent ass. Okay. I'm like uh, when it comes to climate change, I'm like ten percent, and most of it comes from. Uh, animal agriculture because I I was so I was vegan for two years. Oh, gotcha. and oh yeah. A big, and a big reason I was vegan was because of the fact that like cows and their like methane, their farts and their poop um, affects the environment in a huge way. I think they said more that, like than any of the cars or any of the machines on Earth. Cows are affecting the environment more than that, and uh, that's a big reason why a lot of people go vegetarian and uh, vegan and things like that. And so I've always been for, like how you're saying you're for uh, carbon tax, I've always been for some kind of meat tax, because not only is meat like not getting extra tax, but they're actually getting subsidies, so meat's cheaper than it normally would be anyways when it's affecting the environment poorly. Yeah, I don't remember, so also one thing, I don't remember the exact details behind this, but the the amount of methane produced by cows has been largely overestimated. Um, it, it doesn't have as big of an effect as, as, um, as like you were saying, like with like more than cows and uh, more than uh, cars and uh, planes. I'm pretty sure. I think that was like, that's like been debunked a little bit. Really? Um, I don't know the exact details behind it, but I've read a few articles that um, talks about how uh, it, um, how it's not, it's not as, as severe as was once uh, thought. Um, but yeah, okay. that is that is something. That's just something to double check for anybody watching. I I know it's, for a fact that it's overstated, but I don't remember to what extent. It's also a big issue with um, deforestation, though. A lot of deforestation is actually caused by animal agriculture, where they're trying yeah. to grow plants to feed those animals. Like I think a big portion of the Amazon, right, yeah. where it's it's mainly growing soybeans yeah. now, and those soybeans are only to feed the animals. And it's a big issue in Southeast Asia as well. Um, and like I think like Laos and, and Thailand and, and those countries. So not just the cow stuff, but all around, I think uh, animal agriculture could use a little bit of a better way. Oh, absolutely. yeah, it's pretty it's pretty bad. I mean, the bigger environmental impact that I would argue is more like the the amount of like uh, energy that goes into like growing crops and things and the water usage, right? Because like so when when like a, if like a, a, so if I eat something, I get about 10% of the energy from that right. thing. Yeah. Um, and so, like, if I'm eating a cow, which ate a, 
a, a vegetable or whatever, whatever, whatever. Most cows that are grown in the U.S. that are grown, <laughs> uh, that are like, <laughs> they are kind of grown. We yeah, get the true. Fed the corth home or they're, they're fed and... co- they're fed mostly corn. They're fed mostly corn. Okay, um, and so they're getting ten percent of that corn's uh, energy, and I'm getting ten percent of their energy. So by the time like I'm eating a steak, I'm only getting one percent of the original energy that that came from. Right, um, and that cow has to eat way more than you, anyway. Exactly, too. exactly. Yeah, they drink way warm water too with the mm-hmm. water issue. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a big it's a big like there's a lot of water that goes into creating uh the, it's like some crazy statistic it's like it's like hundreds of gallons of water goes into like a pound of steak oh yeah i and, can totally see that and do you do you know last episode we also talked about uh the water crisis do you know much about that in like in in like the western u.s or what or um western u.s northern africa i think south africa has an issue with it um, yeah, wait, one uh, a third pound burger is six hundred and six requires six six hundred and sixty gallons of water. Holy hell, six hundred and sixty. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, it's nuts. Dang. Yeah, what were you saying, Arza? Yeah, sorry, um, my bad. No, no, no. Um, but yeah, so the water crisis with um, with uh, in the Western United States, I know it's a big issue. In like the Middle East, Northern Africa, South Africa. Um, do you know much about that? I know climate change like exacerbates it. Yeah, so climate change exacerbates any sort of extreme weather conditions. Um, I I don't I don't I don't think I I'm I'm well versed enough on why that happens to like give you a, a like a okay. proper ex, uh, explanation. Okay. It's it has more of a lava it, crisis than a water crisis, right? <laughs> <laughs> Water's lava. True. Lava's everywhere. Yeah. Um, my biggest pet peeve when it comes to discussing climate change, and I'm by no means an expert either. Um, For sure. But here in Utah, there's so many damn conservatives that always say, well, you know that a volcano causes more pollution than humans cause an entire year. One eruption. Right, I've heard that. Have you heard that? Yeah. It's like blatantly not true. Is it not true? Like one quick Google search will quickly disprove that. I always thought that was true, but I always thought like we should still like stick with being part of the environment. That's the thing. Like it's it is a logical fallacy in of itself, but it's just Mm -hmm. like not even a true logical fallacy. Probably depends on the volcano, right? Like Yellowstone blows up. Um, yeah, I guess Yellowstone probably. Yellowstone blows up every like. 400 million years or something crazy like the the amount of time it takes to get an eruption out of yellowstone like yellowstone's like in the period where it could erupt but it could erupt today or it could erupt five million years from now really like okay the, the other reason that argument is shit is because like uh volcanoes erupt very very infrequently at least the ones that actually release a lot of carbon dioxide like the volcanoes that are like sort of constantly erupting in hawaii are not going to be cr- uh, creating a significant amount of co2 mm. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, I didn't know that. I always thought that was like, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things where I feel like, uh, uh, you know, often, at least for me and, and people I know, like, you know, you just hear something when you're a kid and then you're like, yeah, all right, I'll live with that. Like, that's something I'll, <laughs> True. I'll stick I, around I've, with. I've gotten, uh, I, I can't, I, of course, I can't name one right now, but I feel like I've had that experience so many times where it's like, I'll just read something on the internet and be like, okay. And then like, seven years later, after I've told like 45 people that it's true, I'll like literally look it up once and I'll be like, oh, I was just lying. I actually recently learned, I don't know, it, I, I was in health class, and I don't know if you remember being in health class, and they said, like, if you ever ate acid, then it would get stored in, like, your back fat, or your, like, spinal fluid. Spinal fluid is what I've heard. Like, acid isn't the drug, or acid is Yeah, the LSD. Yeah, okay. LSD acid. And uh, I was always like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And then I was actually talking to Arza about it the other day, and he's like, yeah, that's not true at all. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's not true. They, they lied to us in health class. They just, just just didn't want us to do drugs, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That was part of the dare. You know the people oh. that still wear those, like, dare shirts? Yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, not, not the coolest people. Dude, they seriously do try to uh, really, you know, mess with your head. Like, I remember being in second grade, and uh, there was, like, a team of cops that came to my school, and they did a whole assembly with me uh, my class and like two other classes and they were talking about like how alcohol is the worst thing for you and you can become abusive because of it and all this kind of stuff and I remember like after I did that class I saw my dad have a beer and I just like bawled and I was like <laughs> oh, are you no. gonna be an alcoholic like cause they really scare there and those places they scare the crap out of you about drugs yeah the the education around it is around like drugs and alcohol are pretty bad no um 
Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, it's just like, you know, alcohol was like technically a poison and it's like probably not the best thing to consume, but you're but it's not going to it's not going to turn you into an alcoholic after one beer. Exactly. Yeah, you you're know? not going to drink a beer and then go beat your wife, you know. Yeah, true. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah. I think you have other problems. I agree. And uh, yeah. Also, what's crazy to me is, like, alcohol, like, by every metric, is, like, worse for you than weed. Um, unless, I mean, I guess, like, if you're smoking weed, then it's then it's different. But, like, an edible, for example, like, weed is so, like, not bad for you. And the fact that it's been illegal for so long and is still illegal in some places is mind-boggling to me. It's completely illogical. It doesn't make any sense. Are, is weed legal in Louisiana? Uh, I think... Medic, I have no idea. I just, medically? I just wanted. Yeah. And and you're in New York now, right? Is it legal there? Uh, I'm pretty it's sure it's just medical here. I don't think it's recreational really? yet, but I think it will be soon. I mean, oh, that's funny. New York is New York is deceptively like there's with if New York didn't have New York City, New York would be like very red um, mm. everywhere, but like New York City and then like it's because like like cities are always more progressive than the re- the rural areas just because yeah, you're exposed sure. to right. more people, you know. <laughs> I know New York was one of the first uh, was one of the first states to decriminalize weed, though. Like having a oh, certain amount on you, like yeah. the cops can't really do anything unless you're doing things like selling. Yeah. So I'm surprised they haven't legalized it yet. I totally thought they'd be one of the states. I'll look it up. Um, while you're looking that up, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just medical. That's okay. crazy. Um, I there's a lot of drugs that are illegal still where they are way safer than alcohol like it's such a weird dynamic how we've just like socially yeah. accepted alcohol and like then the, all these like conservatives are super against the legalization of like anything else it's probably what's just been normalized like alcohol has been part of human culture for so long and so now they're like oh we know it's fine but things like you know mushrooms like those haven't been such a huge part of human culture they yeah. have been though really? like that yeah. like also, they've been we- for like thousands and thousands of years have been used in like rituals and in the same sense as like alcohol though because alcohol has always been like you know the friday night drink i think for like since greek times at least right well i think from what i've been told it was like alcohol was drinking a lot more before just because it was safer to drink than a lot of water oh yeah, yeah, yeah i remember hearing um, about that and so yeah it was more of just like well drink all the time whereas like these other substances were more from what i understand are more like were more like sacred like they were used in rituals by like shamans and for religious reasons ayahuasca Um, yeah ayahuasca peyote stuff like that right from what i understand of course interesting how has weed been part of the culture like i don't know i don't know i think i think weed was a bigger thing like early at least in the u.s i think it was like pretty popular early u.s history and I think like there's no there's absolutely no way that it wasn't a thing before then too. Like it's a plant that you can just like eat and then you get high. Like I'm sure people must have figured that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Like if people can figure out that you can like put <laughs> grapes in a container for like months and then it rots and ferments and then like you can drink that and it'll get you drunk. People can figure out that if you like smoke a plant that it'll it'll get you high. There's no way that it wasn't hasn't been a thing. Did you know the elephants have figured out how to get drunk? That's sick. Like, yeah. they knock plants, yeah. uh, the certain fruit, I can't remember which fruit it was, they knock it off of a tree, and then they wait, like, three weeks, and then they come back, and then they eat it, and it gets them super wasted. That's the, so funny. There's stories of, of, like, in Southeast Asia, of elephants, like, going into villages and taking their alcohol stores. Just to <laughs> get drunk. their alcohol. Do they team up, or is it usually just one elephant? I think it's, like, time? multiple, but I can't I, just, I remember, like, reading, like, news articles on it or something. Look at that. Soon they'll figure out weed. Elephants are smart, dude. They, they like, yeah. They have like religions. They go visit their religions? dead. Yeah, they. Uh, there was it was like a recent like elephant religion animal study. They also they have like a I'm sense of self. That. So like they recognize that like when they see themselves in the mirror that that's them. Right. Which is a complicated a, cognitive function. There's a there's a chunk of animals that do that, right? Dogs can yeah. do that. Cats, I, I think too. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think, I don't, I don't think dogs and cats can, but I could be wrong. Interesting. Um. So yeah, this is something that just came out, but this source doesn't look reliable, so I don't know. But apparently, yeah, uh, they uh, have a religion surrounding the moon. Is what like hmm. researchers have concluded. Really? But, surrounding uh, the moon. 
I might need to find a more reliable source on this because that was a quick Google search and the source did, was just some random ass news site. So right. um, moon elephants though. So take that all with grain of salt. I do know they honor their dead, or they also really grieve the dead as yeah. well. So that's interesting. Yeah, elephants are cool. Yeah, it's my girlfriend's favorite animal. Yeah. Mine too. She she says, says that's why she loves me is because I look like one. You look like an elephant. Yeah. How do you look like an elephant? I got a long nose. It's not like no. I'm, I'm oh, just okay. kidding. I'm just messing <laughs> no. with you. <laughs> you, like, you want to talk? You want to talk about a long nose? Obviously the <laughs> Tony. Little, your nose is beautiful, man. Lizard, I wouldn't change. Hear that, but I got that Greek schnoz. I think they can hear it in like the voice. Like yeah, it, for it sure. sounds a little nasally because of how big it is. No, got that kidding. resonance. I, no, I wouldn't change a single thing about your, your face, oh. Tony. And neither would any of your Twitch viewers. Oh, thank you. And them. On behalf <laughs> of you, on behalf of them. I talked to every single one that's l- watched your stream, and they all said they wouldn't change anything about your face. Wow. I guess I guess they think I'm handsome. Oh, yeah. Amen, brother. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Tony? Uh, hmm. I mean, is there anything you guys want to talk about? I know we've, we've done a lot of, like, informational shit. Why is my camera so blurry? There we go. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying, just to, trying to figure out why my oh. camera is... I know it doesn't matter, but... Um, I, I wanted to ask about how you decided your major. Like, your double major. Like, is theater, like, a passion major? Or is geology a passion major? Or is there a way you want to combine them? Or do you want to do neither of them in your professional career? Like, what's the story behind all that? Yeah, I got you. Um, so growing up, uh, my dad's an engineer, and so uh, okay. growing up, like I, I've always been very like cognitive and analytical and mathy and that kind of thing. And so growing up, like my everybody in my family was like, "You have the brain of an engineer, blah blah blah. You should be an engineer, blah blah." Um, and so I, it's sort of always been like a given that I'm going to study something in the sciences in some capacity. Um, but I also have really loved uh, performance for my life. I like to sing. I like to act. Uh, my mom's my mom's actually an opera singer. Um, oh no way! Uh, oh, that's really yeah, cool. She, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, she do like and, Broadway or a opera? Nah, singer, she like? she so she studied opera a little bit. Um, I I think she sang in some things like in Louisiana, but she her her she has a PhD in musicology, which is like music history kind of thing. Mm. Um, and so that's sort of more of like where her like professional development went into. Okay. Um, uh, so she wasn't like a big time opera singer by any means, but um, right. she's I just I get the performance stuff from her. Um, and basically, I've always family, had. A, sorry. Does your does your family sing a lot? Like, are you guys like always singing together in the car? Gather around the piano. The, are you one of those guys? Are you one I of those wish, families? dude. It's just me and my mom. My brother. Just my brother, and your mom. My brother like could, but he. I, I feel like he's like too cool. For, you know what I mean? Like he, he thinks he's like too cool for it. No one's too cool to sing, man. I agree, dude. Singing is dope. It's, uh, dope. It, it's also just like good for you. Like I think there's been some like neurological studies to show that like singing it's like a positive thing. Same thing with like, whistling music. I mean, like, why the fuck do we have music if not to enjoy doing it? Yeah, um, birds sing. It's totally natural. True. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so I sort of always knew that I was going to do something in the sciences. Like, that was sort of like a, uh, an unspoken rule almost. And I also just really, really like performance and that mm. kind of thing. And so I've... Um, uh, so I came into school. I know I want to do something performing, something in the sci- sciences. Uh, I landed on theater pretty quickly because I was cast in a show my freshman uh, year. Uh, and I absolutely loved it. I really liked the department here. Um, and uh, then I landed on geoscience because I uh, took a, the intro class and I liked the professors. Um, mm-hmm. And you get to do cool shit. Like right now, I mean, what I was doing before this podcast is I was melting basalt in, a, in like a furnace. Um, uh, like basalt is a type of rock, so it was like making lava. And because okay, so I'm doing like a like a, a research project on um, this thing called plastic glomerates, which is a new term. Uh, basically, they found some rocks in Hawaii that have plastic in them um, because like of litter, and then like those lava flows went over the went oh, over the plastics, yeah. and so they've been yeah. inco- incorporated into them. Uh, and so I'm doing a little bit of research on on those. Um, on those things, and so we're trying to synthesize our own by melting basalt uh, and pouring it over plastic. So that's what I was doing this morning. Uh, so you get to do some cool shit. Okay, that's way cool, actually. Yeah, I feel right. like being uh, like getting your major in geology and theater is like grounds for becoming a lawyer. Like I feel like people <laughs> that choose like two completely different majors will end up just being a lawyer because that's somewhere they because they, you can get a you can become a lawyer with any degree right yeah. True. yeah and so yeah I know tons of lawyers that have like all different sorts of degrees so I just feel like that combo is like 
Yeah, I have no idea what Tony. I'm going to do professionally, to be completely honest. Um, Climate. Climate change I'm, lawyer. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, there's a, pretty much everybody that studies, studies geosciences goes into environmental consulting. Um, mm. uh, but uh, on, honestly, like, I'm not, I, I don't really know what I want to do, but I'm not that worried about it because I think, like, I think it's, like, only, like, 20% of college graduates end up with a job in their f- major. Mm. That's so, crazy. Yeah, it's, like, a pretty new phenomenon. Also, like, I think Forbes predicted that, like, people in, like, the early millennial... Sorry, early millennial slash, like, late Gen Z, so, like, the sort of cuspers, um, that they're going to switch careers, like, eight times throughout their lifetime. Eight uh, times? Yeah. I feel like I've already hit eight times, so that's pretty accurate. Mm. What about yours? Have you had eight eight different careers or eight different jobs? Uh, well, it's not like I worked. I think eight different just <laughs> types of jobs. Though. Oh, okay. So it's not like I went from like this restaurant to this restaurant. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I, I One time I counted, I'm pretty sure I've had over like 14 or 15 jobs. 14 or 15 jobs. And a lot of them were different, right? From each other? Yeah. Like you were a counselor and you were a baseball field guy. Yeah, and I was a lifeguard for a little bit, worked in restaurants. Yeah, see, I yeah. feel like those are all like pretty different, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I used to work at a law firm, and then now I deliver pizza. So it's like a... Nice. Yeah. Totally big difference. He also eats pizza. I eat pizza I a lot. I fucking love pizza. What's your favorite I, pizza place? Ooh, um... There's, a, there's this one place growing up. It was called Oscar's Pizza and Ice Cream. Uh, it's now closed, which is sad. Um, but it was back in Louisiana, and their pizza was really good. But their ice cream was insane. They had a homemade ice cream, oh. and they had this thing called... It was like a cookie sundae. And it was like this, like thick ass chocolate chip cookie with like two scoops of ice cream on top, oh. and it was like, like just like fresh out of the oven and like melted. Oh my god! Oh yeah, we have a place like that here. You it's should you should look up Kazuki's or Pazuki's. Kazuki's. Pazuki's. Yeah. What's a Pazuki? It's the same thing. Oh, but it's just okay. like pronounced. There's the two different names for it, but oh, uh, weird. But it's that same thing, and it's it's becoming a bigger and bigger thing. A lot of restaurants have it now, so you can recreate Ooh. it. Look at that. Hell nice little. Yeah cookie with some ice cream on yeah. top i mean who wouldn't like that so good honestly the perfect dessert is like a cookie or a brownie like a warm cookie or brownie and like vanilla ice cream and I, nobody can change my mind on that okay so you're a vanilla man that's like your I, go-to of the three normal ones then i would go with vanilla but like if i'm picking like my probably favorite ice cream flavor of all time would probably be like rocky uh, road for the rocks Oh yeah, <laughs> that kidding. was good. That was good. Thanks, thanks. Uh, uh, probably, I'd probably hit the the milk and cookies, the Ben and Jerry's flavor. Oh, I don't think I've had that. Milk and it's cookies is good. So fucking good. It's like it's like normal cookies and like Oreo ish type cookies in vanilla ice cream. It's it's killer. Interesting. Have you have you ever heard of Bluebell ice cream? Yeah. Is that in Louisiana, or yeah. is that too far away from? Oh, you have it there? Yeah, we have it there. Oh, uh, Bluebell. Did when I was growing up. They have a cookies and cream that's really good too. Mm. Yeah, Bluebell. yo, I, I don't think, think I've had Bluebell either. Is it store bought ice cream? Yeah, but it's it's made in Texas, and there's only in like a couple states that have it. Really? They okay. have to be close enough to Texas. Interesting. Um, yeah, Louisiana there's counts. All, there's McConnell's. McConnell's ice cream is like a really big one in California, also. Mitch McConnell's. Yeah, Mitch McConnell's ice cream. His brand of ice cream. I'm sure it's very it's, popular. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it looks like a turtle. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your what, what's your go to pizza toppings, Tony? Honestly, I'm always a meat lover. So I always go for the meat lovers. Really? Those. Okay. Yeah. I just think that's too wasting much all that water. Yeah. Damn. Damn. True. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, like double I like cheese think. meat lovers. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Do as I say, not as I do. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I I think like. I, I do I do like a little bit of research into, into this kind of stuff, and I feel like so I, the way I, I I ration it with myself is like okay like I'm like actively in the field trying to learn more about this so I like I could splurge on myself but obviously it's better if everybody just does their best you know <laughs> oh I, I I'm I'm just fine with it I don't care yeah no I, I, I yeah um so do they have they, Little Caesars is a national chain right mm-hmm. yeah do they have that over there what are your thoughts on Little Caesars. I've had Little Caesars like one. I think it's like eh. It's eh. Aww. People think what? You, no. You are gonna ask you your, your opinion is incorrect. Kay. No, I you love Little Caesars. Little Caesars is uh, the absolute no, best not. dollar to value meal Even out then, there. Domino's pizza has Domino's, like a yeah. seven ninety nine large pizza that's bigger than Little Caesars and thicker. 
And it's seven ninety nine. Yeah, eight bucks. Is that a deal or is that they, normal? Uh, I mean, it's a deal. Okay, but they so always you have, have, have that coupon? deal. No, you don't. You just ask for it. Oh, I mean, they're on the billboards all over the place. No, Domino's. I I hear so, Pizza Hut is doing much better. I haven't had Pizza Hut in like ten years, <laughs> and so I should probably give them another shot. But Pizza Hut's like, the cheesy crust run, right? Like they have yeah. like the cheesy crust. I yeah. liked that when I was younger, but I, I'm 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 probably Domino's as well. It's, yeah, Domino's so, is probably my favorite. So here here's my argument though: is it's not the quality. Like, of course, Domino's has better quality, hands down. But the dollar to value ratio. Are How much is a pizza? Two little topping scissors? pizzas for five ninety nine. What? Domino's has two medium, two topping pizzas for five ninety nine. A piece? Yeah. You have to buy two. Yeah. You can't just buy one for five ninety nine. Ugh. The Little Caesars, I just, I don't, ever, I won't ever agree with you. I, their breadsticks are pretty bomb. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that, dude. Little Caesars is amazing. How much is a pizza at Little Caesars? Five bucks. Five bucks or six dollars for like a for normal. like what size? Like, uh, it's like I don't know, probably how, how probably big, fourteen inches. Like I don't okay, know, cool, cool. the inches. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like it might be a better dollar value for than uh, than Domino's. Honestly, I fuck with the the pan pizza. There's like pan pizzas at Domino's. Those are killer. I haven't had those. Are they like deep? Oh, yeah. No, pan, they're not. Pan pizzas are decent. Domino should sponsor us. Yeah, true. Or <laughs> Little Caesars. Yeah. Probably not Little Caesars. I wouldn't take them. Just I would Domino's. take them, hands down. Ours would. Yeah. Maybe we'll make it a feud. Like, Arza always has to wear, like, Little she- little Caesars gear. Then I have to wear Domino's gear. I think yeah. that'd be pretty sick. But, uh... But, uh, so the deep dish? Is that it's not deep it's dish. It's, like, pan-made pan pizza. It's made in, the like, a it? pan. Yeah. Like a frying pan? Uh, no, it's just cooked in like a pan. I don't know how to explain it. It's just thick. <laughs> it's it's not even Chicago style because Chicago is more like just extra cheese and sauce, like a deep dish where it curves in. But the pan is just like it's like twice as thick. It's like an inch thick crust. Holy cow! Yeah, I want pizza now. <laughs> yeah, holy cow! How much does that cost? I might need to lo- look into that. I think that's part of the seven ninety nine deal. If I can't remember right. Yeah, I think, I, I think I think it's like eight. I think it's like eight bucks for carry out or something. Yeah, eight bucks for carryout. You always gotta ask for it though, or else it's like seventeen. Yeah, yeah. That's the my that's my problem with Domino's. Is they have all these like dope deals, but unless you know about them, you just get fucked. Right. Yeah. No. I always uh, you always gotta look online. That's I think they have the best coupons online. Yeah. The delivery ones are pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you just call in and order it, then they'll just like assume you're paying full menu price. And yeah, like one time they tried to get me to pay twenty two dollars for a pizza. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gosh. not paying twenty two dollars <laughs> for that pizza. You're I not think- that good. I think, unironically, like, one in ten people that listen to this are going to order a pizza after listening to this. I hope so. So, like, so like maybe you should go after that sponsorship, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you should talk to your employers, man. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> uh, so, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, maybe they'll order it veggie, vegetarian as well. Vegetarian True. pizza. A little environmentally friendly yeah. Domino's or Little Caesar's pizza. The vegetarian pizza is actually bomb. Oh, yeah. I love... Mm-hmm. Have you ever had artichoke hearts on pizza? I have, yeah. I think that's amazing. Have you had broccoli on pizza? Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Really? People look broccoli? at me like I'm a psycho. No. Have you ever had cheese and broccoli? Broccoli is such a great texture when it's cooked on top of pizza. It's really I don't know. Good. There's something about broccoli that just, that just doesn't... I don't mess with broccoli. There's something you about it. Broccoli is one of the easiest vegetables, I feel like. Wait, you don't like it at all? Yeah, I don't... I, I don't I, I've never been... At, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, a broccoli guy, Tony. More of like a spinach guy, you know what I mean? Just like spinach raw spinach. Guy, Tony. You know? What What are your thoughts on Brussels sprouts? Uh, if they're cooked well, they can be good. Um, like I've had, like if you just boil them, then get that, get out. But um, if you like season them properly and like mm. maybe you make them in the oven, you roast them with like some chicken broth or something. Um, like I, I don't know, I could I could see them being good. I, chicken broth probably isn't the right answer, but um, uh, <laughs> I've I've had good Brussels Brussels sprouts before. What are, What are your thoughts, Mike? Um, on vegetables in general or Brussels sprouts? Brussels sprouts. I will make a solid like Brussels sprouts and bacon little mm. casserole thing. Yeah, that That's sounds good. good. Mm. Yeah. Bacon and Brussels sprouts go together well. They gotta be Bacon cooked is so right. good. Oh yeah, bacon's delicious. Wait, so tell me about your vegan, your veganism and your, your journey through that and why you left and why you joined. Um, <laughs> I joined um, because I was dating a girl who's vegetarian. Oh my God! Wait, wait, hold on. Before you, and you had going. to one up her. I had to oh, one yeah. up her. Yeah. <laughs> my my housemate, my housemate right now, uh, was like a huge like he loved meat, um, uh, and he started dating somebody last semester who was a vegan, and uh, he's now a vegan like starting like this semester. Yeah, they they get you. They start they making do. you watch documentaries. And it's they... literally literally that exact thing, and <laughs> not to, not to out my. I mean, I've, nobody's gonna know who my housemate is, but I know uh, who he is. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, oh yeah, you know, yeah, that's true. Um, 
Uh, he literally, like, the main reason was there was, like, one, like, very, very shady study that said, like, you get more erect if you're a vegan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard um, something like that. Uh, which sounds like cap to me. It's uh, probably cap. I've also heard your cum tastes better if you're vegan. That also, there's no way. I've, well, I've smelled, I've my smelled reasoning. vegan farts before. There's Beef. no way. Okay, listen, like, your, 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 your cum is supposed to taste better when you eat things like pineapple, and you smell better, like, sweaty-wise, if you eat healthier. So I could see your cum... I don't know, Tony, eat vegan for two weeks, and uh, <laughs> take a sip, and then go back to your normal stuff and take a sip, and let me know, like, how that goes. Put it, under it might also depend if people are, like, actually healthy vegan, or... Because you can still eat, like, oh, yeah, shit. That's true. Like, you get that's the true. Quora chicken yeah. nuggets from the store, yeah. and get the vegan yeah, ranch. Like I can definitely 40% see that. of your daily sodium for, like, four nuggets. Most vegans I know will eat pretty, like, healthily, and they'll rarely yeah. go to, like, the vegan restaurants where it's like, this is a cheeseburger or yeah. whatever, so. Yeah, I, the beyond, I think Beyond Meat has also been pretty good for, like, um, the, the vegan movement, because it's, like, mm. not bad. Yeah, I cannot wait um, for printing meat. I think if they print meat and it's, like, even just a little more expensive, I think I would get all that. You mean like lab grown, like the lab grown yeah. meat? Yeah. I'm so with you. I think like Just Foods is the name of the is the name of the primary company that works on it. Mm. Um, but they, they can literally already they, they can clone cells yeah. of like a cow and make like ground beef and chicken nuggets. Yeah, it's like, amazing. I that like that's the way to fix the. I, I almost I, I was gonna bring that up earlier um, when you were talking about the like the animal agriculture thing because I think that's like that's like the answer. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was so ex I, I'm excited about that too because that could lead to things like printing organs, you know, for people like heart transplants yeah. or or things yeah. like that, which would be like amazing. Yeah. That would be a much more complex function, but yeah, that that sure. would definitely be dope. Yeah, but I, you know, technology is exponential. If we can print True, a burger, yeah. we can print a. Lawn oh. or a human <laughs> printing baby. I mean, even just think about like think about like hip replacements and knee replacements. Like you can just like get a fucking titanium in your hip that like will be better than your original. You know what I mean? Like we're already oh, yeah. like three D print some hips. I can see that. Yeah. Well, no, we like already no, have like, like titanium like hip. Oh, we already have that. Yeah, yeah. like not three D printed, but like hip replacements like of like titanium. Like my dad literally got his hip replaced, and it's like better than it was before. You know? How'd your dad? Uh sixty. Something. Oh, okay. It's pretty young. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I used to work for this professor that he was an engineer and he would do uh, he, his like, uh, yeah, it was your dad actually. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rockite senior. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but his uh, whole research was centered around like origami and how to Ooh. fold objects to where they're like they can be transported more easily and be smaller but are still like structurally sound and he came up with this uh, i think it's now being used or it's in its final stages of research but um normally i guess when you do like a back surgery and you have to replace like a vertebrae you have to uh create a big opening and it's pretty uh intrusive mm -hmm. but now with his, it's like a vertebrae that folds up to like the size of like a quarter, and they just make a little incision, and they're able to do the whole surgery with just a little incision. They put it in there, and then they like rotate it, and it will unfold and like be a vertebrae replacement. That's so sick. And so he's like, but it's being transferred, um, and like NASA's using his type of like research to like uh, make stuff more uh, cost effective to send into space or like firefighters are using it for stuff and like depends companies like it's being used for tons of different things just this one discovery of like oh let's just uh use origami to make stuff you make a lot of money off that or i'm sure the university did i don't know if he did or not okay. Okay. yeah i think a lot of the times it's like it ends up being like in a patent and you sometimes get paid through that patent that's what my dad when like he's worked on stuff like that not not mm. like to that scale but like he worked on like a like the thing that goes into like firefighters suits that like tells you when it's too hot. Um, oh, that's way cool. Oh, that's right. Cool, yeah. yeah, that's so sick. Actually, I didn't know they had that. Yeah, I just thought I thought they would just know and then they'd leave or however that works. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, oh shit. Okay, I feel bad. Gotta go. 
But yeah, so the reason I joined was because of a girl, and then um, the new girlfriend that I had a couple years later was not vegetarian. I see. Um, And then I also started becoming depressed, and Mm -hmm. I stopped caring about myself, and then I stopped caring about the world, and then uh, I just went back to eating meat. And uh, now I'm not depressed, but I don't want to eat vegetables anymore. (laughs) Ever again, probably. So. (laughs) Fair enough. Well, you did two years of work, so... Two years of work, yeah. I put in my two years, you know? Yeah, that's true. It's like you put in your two weeks for a job, you put in your two years. Right. I, yeah, I do I do love it, because I'll talk to people that are, that are like, oh, yeah, I'm vegan. I'm like, oh, how long have you been vegan for? They're like, three months. I was like, oh, that's cool. I was vegan for two years. And they're like, why don't you go back? I was like, why don't you be vegan for two years? Let me know. Like, Because <laughs> there's tons of people that go back. Like, it's a pretty common thing to... Yeah. I mean, it's it, definitely... It's not for everybody, you know? Yeah, for sure. So... Tony, how did you get the name Rock Guy Tony? Where did that come from? Uh, well, I was just, I made that one video of Lava, and I was like, okay, uh, what can I change my name to that I can, like, piggyback off of this? And I was like, I don't know, Rocks, and then I took Rock Guy, and I was like, Tony. It was okay. not a lot of thought went into it. <laughs> not a lot of thought went into it. Okay. I, I was thinking there'd be some origin story where, no. you know, you, like, save the world with a rock. and I do have a no. nickname at school called Cowboy Tony, um, because I rode horses in high school. Um, and that sort of that sort of stuck as well. So you rode horses that. in high school with your yeah, long flowing I hair. That's a beautiful four H. Uh, sorry. No, never mind. Go ahead. I missed. I missed. The, I missed the meme. Okay. Uh, I uh, I uh, I went to a very very strange high school where every freshman is required to ride a horse for the year and also clean up after them every morning. What? Um, That's like, like so hippie. Like yeah. actually required, or it's like socially required. Like Probably required, actually. required. Like like just Party like it was grade. like it was like everybody had to do a sport, and your freshman year, your sport had to be riding horses. Um, it was that's a cool talent, but like that's so funny. You're forced into it. Very strange. I loved it, so I kept doing it afterwards. Um, uh, but I did a lot of cool, sh- like I did some rodeo type things. Like I did um, like team roping, which is. You have two people and talk about talk, talk about animal cruelty. Um, uh, you have two people um, that have like a rope, like a like a lasso, um, and one of them ropes the horns of the steer, and the other one ropes the heels of the steer. Um, and like basically, like once you have both roped it and like stopped your horses, like that's when like the the race ends. So I did a little bit of, of team roping, and I also did something called Jim Cano, which is like a like a very it's like weaving poles and like going doing races and stuff like that it was like cowboy kind of shit and i also did these i did something called extreme cowboy racing which is a real thing um extreme not just extreme. regular everyday cowboy yeah no it's, it's not your all, it's not your everyday <laughs> bullshit ass cowboy racing it's uh extreme cowboy racing um and uh my my horseback riding instructor was like the world champion extreme cowboy racer um uh and I, I i was nationally ranked when i was a senior in high school in in extreme cowboy racing that's my like that's like one of my favorite like fun facts so did you um, own your own horse no i like i it was just it was a very very wealthy pub uh, private school um okay like so it was like a riding with horses yeah yeah so they had like the school had like a hundred and something horses um uh for like 250 students um uh and so yeah you just like the school would like sort of give you a horse for the year and they had like stables and everything so Um, they just had like a horse guy at night or like how did how did that work well they just chill they just chill in their stalls they just chill yeah Uh, i guess that makes sense i don't know yeah but yeah that's crazy i've never even heard of that that they'd give you i've heard of like an egg that's the thing i got in high school like you'd have an <laughs> egg you'd have to carry for like a week and then make sure you don't drop it but you had an entire freaking horse <laughs> you actually had to do that I've, yeah. i i hear about people i like hear that story but i never have met anybody that's actually had to do it i think it was middle school like it was like a health class thing i can't remember what it was but i had to take care of an egg with this other girl and mm. uh I just took, I just put it in my fridge. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with it. I don't know, man. Like, uh, but yeah, that's what happened. You can't really do that with a horse, though. You can't fit him in your fridge. And depends how creative you are. That's true. I think. Yeah, you need a big fridge. <laughs> um, so, growing up, I had horses for oh, probably sure. the first like uh, eight years of my life. Probably. I didn't know that at all. Yeah, but we used to have horses, and uh, I never really rode them much because I was like too young to really handle myself very well um but my sister competed in 4-h and that's what i was asking and like did you compete in 4-h do you know what that is i have no idea is that an english thing 
Like English writing? You know how there's like Western um, English? I, I They have all types of events. I, gotcha. I forget what the H stands for, but there's like four different like pillars of the organization. And it's like a national kind of community thing. And one of the branches, I think, is horses. Um, mm. But mm. it's like tons of a different equestrian stuff. And we live like right down the street from from an equestrian center. And um forgot where I was going with this, but uh yeah, basically I wanna know if you did four H or not. No, I did not. I, I think that's my guess is that's probably like an equestrian like equestrian English riding thing, whereas I just like did some dumb cowboy shit like herding cattle and that kind of thing. Mm. Is like bar is barrel racing and stuff considered uh English? No, no, that's like that's sort of there's some overlap there because it's a rodeo okay. event and it's also part oh, of Jukana, okay. but it's in like rodeo is like pretty much segregated based on like sex or gender, um, oh, okay. uh, and so like barrel racing is like the women's uh, is like one of the women's uh, things, okay. whereas like like bull riding and steer wrangling is like a like the men's side of things, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so was it a boarding school that you went to? Yeah, I was. Okay, that's cool. I always wanted to go to boarding school. Ever since I saw Zoe 101 uh, when I was like <laughs> six years old, I was like, that'd be a cool place to go. No parents. Yeah, it was cool. It was, there's ups and downs. I, I, I had a bit of a tough time because I was kind of bullied because I was like, I was pretty, I was kind of a, I was weird. I went to bed at like 8 p.m. because I wanted, I was like super obsessed with getting enough sleep. Well, you definitely um, don't do that now. So. Oh, no, no, I'm <laughs> fucked now. Um, <laughs> 8 a.m., uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I had my good sleep schedule bullied out of me. Now, um, uh, I, and I was sort of like, I sort of was like, sort of kind of pretentious in that, like, I was like big into like, being doing really well in school and like I was like I would like look down on people if they didn't like work hard in school or whatever which is a dumb thing to do mm. um and so and then I kind of got bullied on behalf of that that doesn't mean it was right for them to bully me but I think I ended up being a, a better more interesting person afterwards not that yeah. this is not an advertisement for bullying don't bully people uh, <laughs> sometimes kids need bullying you know I, I don't want to say it I don't want to be on record saying it but maybe I agree um the thing is is like at least constructive bullying the way I think of it is where like you know when you enter middle school and you talk to like another kid and he's like your breath stinks and you're like oh i should probably start brushing my teeth true that's the true. kind of bullying i but, at least get but is that bullying like yeah, that's i think not bullying, bullying has malicious I think it's intent like, but i think like it, like like at least with kids being honest and like that's a mean thing to say so i i don't know if, i it? wouldn't i that's wouldn't consider that bullying say, but i don't think that's bullying I okay, think it's just like, like communicating. I think that's just like i think like that's a thing that you should like cuz if my breath smelled bad i would want somebody to be like hey buddy like yeah, Your but nobody like would, ass. right? Would you tell? Would you tell somebody if their breath smelled bad? Uh, I th it would depend on the day and the person. You know, like some days I feel more like like comfortable and confident saying that kind of thing. Mm. But and and like with some, like if it was my friend, I'd be like, "Your breath smells like ass." Um, right? <laughs> um, uh, like, be like go brush your teeth. Um, but uh, but like yeah, if, if it was like a, somebody I didn't know that that well, it would depend on the day because there's some days where I could probably do that because I think I, people would probably want to know that, right? I don't know. I would want to um, know that, but like the only person I would ever tell that to would be like my girlfriend because like mm. I know that like obviously she knows that I'm not disgusted by her breath or anything and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. And there's like that trust built, but like friends or. Or even like my family, like I don't know if I could do it. Like I would, uh, it would be a cringe moment for me if I said I think, anything. I think it also depends on like the location, because like if you're in like in front of people, yeah, or like if you're like in like if you're like if you're like whatever like at school or like out of the house, whatever somewhere, um, and you're like, hey, your breath smells bad, and like you don't have gum, they don't have gum, they don't have a mint. Now they're just self conscious about it for a while. Right, but if like if if you have gum, then you can also do it more subtly and be like, "Hey, you want a piece of gum, uh, or something like that, or or like a mint." Um, uh, but if like if I'm like at somebody's house, I would feel much more comfortable doing it because like they probably have a toothbrush, so they're gonna be like, "Oh shit, let me go brush my teeth." Right. See, that's where I see that it's bullying. Like in middle school, like they'll say it in front of like all your friends or maybe yeah. your crush. Mm -hmm. Like that's totally got to be at least some kind of bullying, you know? And I yeah, think I that sticks that. with you more than some other kid like telling you off to the side that you should brush your teeth you know you're like because if that traumatizing experience happens you're like oh i should brush my teeth every day now yeah well i, I still so in my mind i think bullying is classified by like something that is one consistent and two like intentionally malicious mm. and so like i think that if someone even if it is in front of people even if you're embarrassed by it if he's just like 
says it once and he's like saying it matter of factly and he's not like really trying to hurt you he's just like i'd like actually just like dude brush your teeth like i don't i don't think that's bullying i feel like by that you could go up to like a kid on the street and be like hey you're fat in front of all his friends and then just like but leave, that's not that like a be you can't bullying. like just not be fat suddenly you know what i mean but, like, yeah, but in that scenario you can't have bad breath suddenly right well, I mean, yeah, but like it'll 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 be a problem you can fix overnight, you know. That's true. Um, I mean, in theory, unless you got like a rotting tooth in your mouth or something. Uh, but uh, and I also and think like with with like the the fat thing is like if you have bad breath, you're sort of negatively impacting other people that's because what like, I was if you're talking say, yeah. to them and you smell like ass, then you're, you know, like they have to smell you smelling like ass. Um, uh, but if you're fat, like you're only harming yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's only gonna negatively impact your your own health. So, like, making fun of somebody for something that's only negatively impacting themselves just doesn't seem, like, as the same as being like, hey, your breath smells bad. I guess it's just how you define bullying. That's how I define it. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing. We're going into, like, debate lord fucking logic right now. Debate lord. <laughs> I, 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 de- bullying is, is categorized as something that it has both malicious, malicious intent and is repeti- repetitive. <laughs> yeah. Well, we both took debate and you took drama, which it's is true. basically debate casual style. <laughs> <laughs> Debate uh, level one. <laughs> yeah, level one debate. <laughs> Chill out debate. Smoke mm-hmm. a joint debate. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Cry debate, you know. Cry debate, okay. <laughs> anything that? I don't have anything else. Yeah, do you have anything else, Tony? Oh, I, I, I have to run. I, yes, I want to run something by you guys. Okay, okay. So I, I was thinking, you guys, live in, you guys live in Salt Lake City, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of Mormons, right? Yeah. Yeah. So do you think somebody could like run on the platform of like legalizing polygamy like no as no no polygamy is still like tolerated right because there's active polygamists but you can't get married but yeah, you can well, have polygamy, kids with everybody polygamy means uh means like married like right. polygamy means you're married to multiple people so i was curious like if the mormon community would be like strong enough that they would vote for polygamy as like as like like a mayor and then like you could like sneak like a progressive agenda pass by being like hey you can marry two women you know what i mean yeah i mean for me as for me i don't really care like as long as it's all consensual like oh yeah for sure doesn't even bother me and even like no no that's a hot one i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say (laughs) say it um what is it incest as long as there's no chance Uh. for kids (laughs) like even then i'm like if it's consensual okay like but yeah, that's, maybe I'll cut that's that part like, out. That's like the classic that like the incest thing is like the classic like online like debate lord shit where it's like 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 it's it's pretty honestly it is pretty difficult to find like a moral reason why it should be illegal or whatever. Yeah, you only you know think it I should mean? be illegal because it's gross, but if it's consensual, you know, yeah. like yeah. and there's no chance of kids or anything, then like technically, I, I could see morally like there being like a power dynamic. Thing between siblings that like, really? it's like the same thing but with like, like employers but or there teachers are, or professors or stuff. There are siblings that are happily together right now. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. Like obviously, there's been rapes and families and things like that. But you know, it, it, the way I'm thinking about it is just like you know, consent, married, like mm. you know, and in in any relationship, you can't really determine if it's completely consensual. But at least that's how I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I also yeah, think like true, with, with like the, the power dynamic thing is incredibly difficult to quantify, which is sort of what yeah. you're saying, I think, Mike. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I, I think like in general, I've been thinking a lot about like the way that we view relationships and like how like polyamory is so like weird, but like it doesn't make sense that it's necessarily weird, like on like a logical sense where like, I mean like you can have multiple friends, you can have multiple like friendly uh experiences with uh, with like multiple people so why why couldn't you have multiple like romantic feelings for other people i've been in a position where i've been like romantically interested in multiple people and it really fucked me up in the brain um yeah right and i was was just wondering like is that because like it's like inherently difficult to be interested in more than one person at the same time or is it because like of like the societal pressures I don't know. I have a lot of friends that are polyamorous, so they'll yeah. have like, you know, two boyfriends and a girlfriend, and they'll all just like kind of hang out with each other. Like I know, I know somebody that just is in a relationship with their two roommates, so they're all together. That's crazy. And it's two girls. And How a guy. the fuck does that work? I don't know. They all just cuddle and you know Netflix and chill, and you know, you're mad at one, you get you know, you hang out with the other. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it seems honestly, it seems kind of sustainable more so than like I feel like a lot of marriages. Like I think like. 
a large chunk of marriages as an end in divorce, and like up to seventy five percent of uh, married people admit to infidelity. Uh, Holy cow! Seventy five percent. There's so there's like That's ranging. Insane. There's ranging poll numbers between like I think like the lowest estimate that I saw was like thirty, and the highest was seventy five. So I said like up to seventy five for some for cheating at some point during a marriage. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, humans are not na- naturally monogamous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like, it's like, in caveman times, we were just fucking, you know what I mean? Um, right. So it's like, it's pretty not human nature to do that. And I also think it's, I think it's deceptively difficult to find a partner that you're willing to be with in romantic, sexual, and like friendly capacities for your entire life, you know? I just right. think that's a hard thing to find. For sure. Like, I've had my girlfriend for about um, five years now. It'll be five years next month. Oh, and uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. And we still are in that position where we're like, you know, we don't need to get married yet. You know, like, yeah, we don't exactly. know. Because we even said back when we were dating when we were 16, we were like, okay, we'll wait five years until we get married. Like, we don't want to get married young. We don't want to. And now we're at five years and we're like, let's wait eight years. Let, let's let's, let's <laughs> yeah. keep waiting because we're just not in a rush at all. Just because, you know, there's so many things that can change. And, and yeah, like relationships are hard. And, you know, they're it's not like they're going to be any easier when you get married. Yeah. They're going to have better tax benefits, though. Better. Yeah. Slightly better tax sure. benefits. Yeah, um, My brother's actually getting married a week from today. Oh, no that. way! Yeah, well, it kind of sucks. Kind of sucks to be in the in the pandemic because I can't go. You right? Know? Is that um, the mathematician yeah. brother? Yeah. Look at that. We'll have to have him on because we were talking about. That. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. I'll let him know. Math. Yeah, he's a he's a big math guy. Um, math guy. Tony. Math guy. Tony's brother. <laughs> Tony's brother. Yeah. <laughs> His name's not also Tony. Nah. Alas. Oh, Alas, our parents didn't want to confuse us too much. He's older too, so I'd be second Tony, which would be would be bad. Tony two, yeah. Um, Tony two bad. Oh yeah. Really fast. I want to revisit that polygamy question you had. Oh sure. Um. So I grew up Mormon. Uh, oh yeah. I was Mormon until, like, slowly phased out from since like high school, but I really like dropped it completely about. It'll be like a year ago this month, actually. Um, That's it, huh? Yeah. That's fine. Oh, yeah, I guess completely dropped out. Yeah, yeah completely you had dropped. feelings for yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, like, went on a, you know, like, the Mormon missionaries and stuff. Like, I was, a, I went on a mission. Oh, um, my God. Yeah. How so. did we not talk about, oh, my God. <laughs> um, so, this is a, a big, I feel like, especially on the East Coast, it's a big misconception that, like, polygamy is still a big thing. Mm. But um, more like the Mormon religion doesn't uh, practice polygamy anymore. Oh, and I did not know that. Or, yeah. or at least the mainstream. There are um, fundamentalists that they're called FLDS. Oh my god! And they still do. Um, but usually they live in kind of like Southern little Utah. cult communes, yeah. kind of. Um, <laughs> and so they're pretty isolated. There are some families like. Where I grew up, there was a Chick Fil A where like all the workers were was like a polygamous family. Yeah, um, that's insane. Like, I'd probably say like what five percent maybe of all Utah. No, I, I would that. be surprised if it was five. Would be surprised if it was five, um, but like it might be. I don't know. Every time I go to like St. George or like Hurricane, I will see like whole families. Oh, that's of that's true. I've, I've, like that. I was or forgetting you know, about like Southern Utah. Utah. Yeah, or even just a little down south from like Northern Utah, like mm. yeah, Salt Lake. Like, but I you got like, you got to keep in mind most of the population is in Salt Lake Valley. That's true. That's true. Um, so, but it could be five percent. But like, I, I feel that's like true. there I are a lot them, down there. I see them like, not frequently, but like enough. Where yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, th- yeah. Most uh, people are pretty opposed to polygamy in Utah. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Oh yeah. Ours. I. I want to. I, I, we can talk about this now, or, I, or maybe I'll have you on my stream sometime. Uh, because I want to. I want to. I want to pick your brain about about this. Like, how deep into like. How how like psycho were you back in the day with like Mormon shit? Uh, what do you, Mike? From an outside perspective, what do you think? Um, you know, so Utah. I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase "bubble Mormon," Tony, but any Mormon that you have encountered in your life is so much cooler <laughs> than most of the Mormons out here in Utah, and it's because That's we, funny. at least I call them bubble Mormons, and it's because it's these Mormons that grow up and. Uh, basically think it's super normal what is going on and mm. and i don't i don't want to say if normal is the correct word but they think it's it's the only correct 
thing because their family is Mormon and they're a Mormon and like you know everybody they go to school with is Mormon and so it's it's so weird to them that they think anybody would think outside like I even remember being a kid and other kids would go out to me and they'd be like are you Mormon or Catholic like those were the only two <laughs> religions like that was a question I would get in like elementary school that's so, so funny yeah so I think uh, I think Arza was definitely not a bubble Mormon um, I think he had, like, he was cool with, like, ideas outside of, like, the church and things like that. Um, but, yeah, like, he, he definitely was Mormon. Like, he went on his missions. So obviously, you have to be pretty Mormon to to do that. But he was a really accepting Mormon. Like, he, I don't think he was ever racist gotcha. or homophobic or anything like that. You did the full two years or what? Um, I did... A year and a half. 17 months? 18 months? Something oh like that. I, ca- I came home early. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I... Looking back, like... I've always had a hard time describing because, like, I never felt like I fully believed. Like, I felt mm. like I always had issues with the church. All right, I, he, also, that's another thing. Bubble Mormons, they think the church is, like, really significant to the world. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Like, they think it's, like, like the Mormon church is, like, the pinnacle uh, to the, like, the ensign to the nations is what they call it. No um, lying about the numbers. We're getting millions of yeah. people every year. And so it's it's like really interesting to go whenever I go outside of Utah or talk to people outside of Utah, they're like know nothing about Mormons. And yeah. it's like but it seems like such a big deal here. Um That's one thing that I, I I like I'll go to like California or I'll go to Disneyland or somewhere, they'll be like, Oh, where are you from? And I'll be like, Oh, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. And they would say the weirdest shit, like, Oh, don't you guys like store peanut butter in caves and like eat it? What? And I'm like, <laughs> No, seriously, that was an actual question somebody asked me. And I was like, No. What are you hearing about us? Like, we were actually talking to the empathetic atheist, and we he thought that we didn't celebrate birthdays. But I guess some religions really? don't celebrate birthdays. But I was like, don't celebrate birthdays! <laughs> like, like, it's always something new. I feel like every yeah. time I go out of state and I tell people I'm from Utah, yeah. not even that I'm Mormon, just I'm from Utah, they automatically assume that, yeah, I'm part of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, a lot of growing up and especially in high school, it, it wasn't like so much that I believed it or like my, uh, like I stuck to the teachings of like the lifestyle, mm-hmm. but um, it was more so like reflecting back, it was a lot more like I was intrigued by the theology behind it. And I was like, I really enjoyed like, cause I've always in, enjoyed like just learning about new things. Yeah, of And course. so I enjoyed like learning like the deep, uh, like uh what's the word doctrine of the religion and i i kind of like considered that uh, as a belief but like i always had these doubts i'd always ask questions and like that's very frowned upon and gotcha um so yeah yeah that's super interesting were you were you fairly conservative uh, or were you like like growing up you actually uh, left, weren't you? No, I was super. Were you? I was super conservative until I decided uh, that I should Google some of my beliefs. Google, and uh, it's it's funny what that will do sometimes. <laughs> Literally, uh, learn anything about any of the beliefs I had, and oh they do a one eighty. Is and so, yeah, I uh, I was really conservative until my junior year, and I have a really good friend that you know I would like. We were actually able to have like. Uh, political discussions and without like getting heated because sure. everyone gets heated when politics comes up yeah. and um, he was really patient with me and my viewpoints and my uh, lack of education and yeah he would just force me to confront my beliefs and you know ask for sources and stuff like that and yeah so I, I've done a complete 180 on my belie- on my political belief system. That's when I met you, so that's why I guess I thought you were pretty yeah. loved. I met, I met yeah. you in junior year, so. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Of high school, I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 Okay, gotcha. Um. Yeah. Wow. That's that's super interesting. I, I I always like hearing about when people have like a radical shift in belief, and like how that happens. Like that's something that I I always find very interesting because I think a lot of the time. It's, it's pretty hard to change your beliefs because there's there's this thing called the backfire effect, which is sort of the opposite of confirmation bias, where, like, if you hear something that contradicts, like, your fundamental worldview, even if it's, like, empirical evidence, it's more likely to calcify your belief in the other yeah. direction. Yeah, we yeah, talked I've about that, that on our podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I th- oh, I think I listened. I think I actually that's the first time I heard about it, and then I looked it up later. Oh um, no way! I think I listened to that episode. Yeah. It was like the first one, like the first full one. I don't know. I, haven't, I, I don't know, man. They all okay. blend together. Well, all right. You should, if you like those turnaround stories, though, I'd recommend listening to the empathetic atheist one because yeah, he grew up in, in yeah. those crazy conditions and he like did a full not even one eighty. I, I wish there was a yeah. more degree than one eighty. <laughs> Well, there's like he did a 540. Yeah, he did a 540 no scope. <laughs> he went around once and plus yeah. 180. Yeah. yeah. Could, Completely you could turn like it around. Change it into like a spherical coordinate system. And, uh, <laughs> 180 this way and that way, you know. For sure. Yeah. I that's one of the would, things we that's one of the things we try to do at Mike at the Helm. Like we try to just have fun conversations that can be about like tough subjects or topics, you know. Yeah, we want to have sure. people from all different backgrounds. And I think so far we've been really getting people that are like left and like not super religious yeah and we're trying to get more and more people on that are like less p- uh, part of our viewpoint and it's not necessarily to argue but just to understand um you know like you know the way they are and like how they came to that you know? yeah i just think and like uh, i'm obviously biased in this but i do think it's generally more difficult to find like i think there's more reasonable people on the left than there are on the right because i think most like like most like left leaning things in this country are objectively better than like right leaning things like like I, especially like with like cultural issues you know like like there is no actual reason to like stop transgender people from using the bathrooms that they want to use so For like sure. like if that's like your 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 party's platform and that's like the sort of rhetoric that you're pushing it just doesn't make sense like but you got to remember, like that wasn't always the left thing, you know. Like even 15 years ago, yeah. Like, well, we've it been was steadily to yeah. be against that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I mean, it, it we we had an extension of that, right? Like like right. any sort of like like uh, rights around. Anytime it's a right for a minority, it's always like the left is on the side of giving that minority a right. Um, not even a minority, but can be like a protected class of some kind. So like like whatever. Like seven years ago was gay marriage, and now it's and now it's like trans rights. A lot of the. A lot of that. So it's just, and like like in the '60s, it was the civil rights movement. You know, yeah. um, like it's like it's. I just I think that I think that there's a lot of like right leaning things that I think are like objectively incorrect and are the wrong decision. Um, and I feel like that's because like conservatism in essence is like conserving. It is like something that pushes for traditionalism. And like if like a tradition or a, a something that you're trying to conserve is like no longer beneficial to society, then like conserving it or, or like holding on to tradition is super illogical and can be detrimental to like the progression of a society. Yeah. Yeah, and one one thing that um I think is kind of interesting, and this is kind of random, um, but like conservatives, you know, are the ones that are typically against LGBTQ rights. Mm-hmm. But way back in the day, like ancient Rome and stuff, like thousand years ago, like being homosexual and stuff was acceptable. You oh, know? ancient Greece and too. Yeah, being yeah. a pedophile is acceptable in ancient Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, but it's just interesting, like. I mean, that is so long ago, like, we've gone through, like, humanity's gone through many cycles of, like, different political systems and whatnot, yeah. but but uh, I just think it's interesting, like, it could still be considered conservative in a way to, like... Yeah, that's true. Support it's like, it's like, rights again. let's, like, it's like, you know, like, the whole, like, meme of, like, preserving Western culture or whatever. Yeah. It's like when Western culture was, like, dudes fucking each other in the ass at war, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, even like tons of giraffes and lobsters are gay, right? Like, yeah, it's, there's a ton it's, of animals it, that are pretty yeah, gay. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of like, there's a lot, been a lot of observed homosexuality in like the animal kingdom outside of humans. Mm. Well, also, I think it's interesting, like, <clears throat> how the natural way, it, like, is the argument for conservatives with that. And it's like, well, one, like, what makes something natural, like, morally correct? Right. And two, like, is it natural to like support these other things you're supporting? Like, also, is pollution how, natural? <laughs> how is it not natural? Also, like in the first place, because like if like if like your fucking brain is wired to want to have sex with somebody of the same sex or gender or whatever, that's what's natural to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, I hate that. I uh, it, like. I, there's truly no good argument against it. Like. The only thing that people say, especially with like home, like homophobia, like the only, people always are like, oh, like the Bible, and I'm like, that's not an argument, you know. Yeah, oh, the Bible. <laughs> that's pretty much <laughs> what they say too. So, 
Yeah, and uh, it's yeah, it's I I don't know. It's it's I, I I this is something I need to like work on like if I'm talking to a person who falls into this belief system because I'm I'm so quick to like like just like be like, "Oh my god, that's so fucking stupid." But that doesn't get you anywhere, you know. Yeah. Like that just right. turns people off of listening. Yeah. Yeah, the best way is to kind of like pretend to agree with them and then um, kind of ask them more and more complicated questions to get them out of that thought yeah. process. I think like when you corner them and, and you ask them a question that they like don't that they like are answering with the same logic but don't agree with anymore. At least at the very least, it's like, huh, you know, makes you think. Right, because Joel even said like he's like I'm closed minded and there's nothing wrong with that because I'm right. And I'm like, yeah. you don't understand like what's uh, what's wrong about that. <laughs> what the issue with that oh, statement another is? Another thing with Joel is he thought the Earth was six thousand years old, right. um, and he was telling that this to somebody that was studies ge- geoscience. Right. And like sometimes I envy the confidence of these people because I am so hesitant to like make a a strong claim. But there's people out there that are like Trump's the president still, and uh, and like climate change <laughs> isn't real, you know. Right. Yeah, even, like, with the Trump thing and stuff, like, all the time I say, like, look, like, I don't know for sure. For all I know, QAnon stuff is all real, but, like, if I were to bet money on it, I would very heavily bet against it being true. Yeah, know? I mean, you, I mean, like, what, like, they, like, the the whole QAnon thing is, like, the, the Democrats are a satanic cult, they're a satanic fucking cabal that drink the blood of children to maintain eternal youth. And you're yeah. like, yeah, okay, Joe Biden's maintaining eternal youth. Yeah, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a s- strange cult. But yeah, Joel was wrong about March 4th. And True. then now he claims uh, it's going to be within the next coming months. Very yeah. vague this time. True. He he, he learned his lesson. He was too specific the first time. <laughs> right. It could happen. You know, next week it could happen. Twenty seventy seven. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I like Trump twenty seventy. Tr- Trump Trump or punk twenty seventy seven. Trump or punk twenty seventy seven. <laughs> that's that's when I would vote for him. Um. Yeah, I think we got it. Is yeah. Anything else, Tony? Uh, I think that's it. Uh, yeah. But it was sweet. Yeah, it was fun talking to you. Oh yeah, it's fun talking to you, man. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to come onto your stream sometime if that's cool. Yeah, no, I'd I, I'd love to start talking. I mean, I I'll start streaming again more when uh, school settles down a bit, and probably mm. after I graduate, I'll try to like make it be a bigger thing. Right. Um, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for yeah. taking time out of your day to come on our show. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's tons of fun. It was a nice decompressor because I've been pretty busy today. That's good. And uh, if you if you did ever want to talk about Mormonism or anything, like hit us up. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, um. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I'm just going to do the outro right now. Sweet. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode. Uh, special thank you to Rock Guy Tony for coming on. Rock Guy Tony, if our listeners wanted to see more of you, where could they find you? You can find me on uh, TikTok and Twitch and also Twitter. I've made one tweet. Uh, all of them, the username is Rock Guy Tony. Awesome. Thank you so much. And if you are looking to support the podcast, you can find us on Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok at Mike at the Helm. And you can also find us at anchor.fm slash Mike at the Helm if you want to support us at all. Yeah, sweet. Cool. Alrighty. That's a wrap.